10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. Welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fussell. We're here for the awesome, awesome, epic episode 300. Woo! We got a live audience here. We are at Max's Wine Dive here in San Antonio, Texas, in the court. There's even people clapping out there. They have no clue what the hell's going on over here. Um, so uh, first of all, I want to thank Max's Wine Dive. They've been like super awesome special to me ever since they freaking opened. Uh, I did lose my mayorship to this guy, Chris on Foursquare because I was in Houston training for my new job. Uh, we won't stay on camera worry, but I th we'll tell everyone if they don't know later on. Um, but uh, so I was gone for a while, but uh, they've been awesome to uh, go ahead and let me use their back room. It's a Monday night. Uh, not a lot happens in restaurants on Monday night, so that's why I picked it. Not Saturday night as somebody thought we were doing it. <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah, that's okay, that's right, two of them. Uh, one of them at least got to uh, enjoy the pool the rest of the night. <laughs> at least I hope so. Uh, so we're gonna be doing three wines here. Uh, these are wines, believe it or not, I've never had at Max's Wine Dive. I know, hard to believe I've never had these three wines, but it has happened. Um, so we're gonna be doing that. Uh, we're gonna get that going, because uh, we're gonna see how long I, I uh, talk, because I can't see anything over there. What the heck is that, man? You know what, screw it, we'll wing it. All right, so um, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Well, first of all, I, besides thanking Max's Wine Dive, I got Martin over here, the wine sales manager, uh, setting everything up, and why do I never remember your name? Lydia, that's right, Lydia. And we're like, we're like, like on, on uh, LinkedIn too. That's anyway. Uh, Lydia's taking care, great care of us. Um, I've got about what, about 12, 15, 12, 15, 12 people here. It's supposed to be like twenty something. Where are all of you that signed up that didn't show up? You're late. Um, anyway, uh, we've got a live audience here, and I just want to thank everyone who's uh, hanging out in the live audience here. Uh, a lot of these people are close friends of mine. They've been very supportive over the years, and uh, I really appreciate them taking time out of their day. Uh, driving from Austin, uh, i got three friends who came in from Austin, uh, so thank you for all of that for coming in here. Um, huh? And Pipe Creek, yeah, that's uh, what, Guatemala? <laughs> all right. Um, oh, yeah, real quick, do we have those pricing things? All right, cool. Before we get into that, before I screw that up. All right, so um, we're going to try three wines. Uh, we're going to do a white and two reds, and these are kind of from all over the place. Uh, the first one we're going to do, uh, and I believe everyone should have it on their, on their table by now, this is the uh, 2011 Spice Route Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this is from the Spice Route Winery in South Africa. So um, I'm going to be having some South African wines pretty soon. Uh, so I kind of chose this because um, the person that sent me some other South African wines wants me to try some other ones first uh, to kind of you know match up with, see what's going on with that. But uh, I don't drink a lot of South African wines. Um, they have been a hit or miss for me in the past. Uh, the uh, tasting notes on this, uh, well, first of all, it gets the name Spice Route because uh, when they go around the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, you have the spice traders going through, and that was a spice route. Uh, the vineyards are on the Cape, on the, uh, Cape of Good Hope's west coast on the, off the Atlantic. Um, kind of different thing here. They machine part of this by hand and part of this by machine. I mean, harvest by machine and hand. Uh, they do the machine harvesting at night. Uh, they ferment this in stainless steel um, and they don't, it does not go through what's called malolactic fermentation. So for those of you who don't know what that is, mallow is a, a Latin for apple and lactic is Latin for milk or, you know, so lactic, right? So it doesn't go through the apple to uh, milk type of transformation as far as the yeasts are concerned, as far as the, uh, the um, chemicals that happen after the fermentation. So this should not have any of that butteriness 
that happens when you go through malolactic, or sometimes they call it mallow. Um, so it didn't go through that. It's also called a second fermentation a lot of times. Uh, and it's also rested on what's called lees for two months. Now, lees are the dead yeast cells. I know they sound a little gross and all that, but it sits there in the tank. Uh, and what it does is they'll, they, they didn't say they stir it, but they should be stirring these lees. And then what it does is it adds some mouthfeel to wine. Uh, this is very typical with the Sauvignon Blancs in the Loire Valley. Uh, and the muscadets that they have up there in the western part of the Loire Valley. So this is something that's kind of normal in this type of wine. Um, I have no idea what this flavor profile is going to be because I'm not used to having it. You know, we're not having uh, New Zealand, we're not having Loire Valley, we're not having American. So this is why I, I went for this. Um, I know that this, I, I didn't have the wine list here, uh, but I think if I remember seeing it online, it was in the 10 ish to 15 dollar range retail maybe not um what does it say on the wine list it's, it's uh for this spice right sauvignon blanc this is gonna be restaurant price by the way and then they're gonna give me a retail. how much a million dollars <laughs> all right um 34 okay so yeah probably about 10 to 12 bucks um retail uh, i know they'll they'll give me some retail pricing here for maxes and every, anyone here that you'll be able to get special pricing on any of these wines um and then, uh, so they'll give me that pricing, but I think if I remember right, 10 to $12 retail-ish, and that's about right for 34 uh, restaurant price. $16.99 here, there you go, for retail. Okay. So, uh, so they'll sell it to everybody for like 17 bucks, which is a good deal, all right? So uh, we're gonna check it out you now, typical Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, it's a white wine. Uh, it's got that strawish color. So we're gonna, so everybody take, take, dig your nose deep into this glass. Uh, mostly citrus for me, uh, lime and lemon at, at, uh, right off the top. Maybe even some, uh, I don't know, some rind type of thing, mel melon rind maybe. Maybe a little grassiness. Does anyone get anything different? The same. I know Dad never gets what he he, he goes. What? Lemongrass. lemongrass. There you go. Anyone else get anything off the wall? Anything chalky? Sour milk. Okay. Anything chalky? I don't know. I'm just throwing these words out because it's kind of typical of these wines. Anyone get cat pee? No. Okay. I know David and Connie know what cat pee smells like. <laughs> uh, I don't either, but that's a that's not an unusual thing for Sauvignon Blancs. But usually we're talking the New Zealand style. Um, I don't get anything like that. But I like the, the lemongrass, the rotten milk. I think I'm gonna remember that one because I mean, yeah, because I've had that smell and I, I struggle with describing what it is. But that's that's a good one. And this is why I ask people because we all have different experiences, different backgrounds, and sometimes someone will say something. You're like, oh yeah, that's right. I get that. Um, and sometimes someone will say, I get star fruit out of it. And you're like, I've never had a star fruit. So I don't know what star fruit tastes like. It's just like most of the world doesn't. Well, I guess you shop at Whole Foods. Maybe you do. I don't know. All right. So let's taste it. Let's check it out. No spit bucket. That's okay. Um, <laughs> no, that's all right. <laughs> Um, first thing off, off top, I get really a lots of acid, but you know the other thing I get is sweet tarts, like powdered, the powdered sweet tart. So really like they had like a lemon or lime sweet tart thing. Um, I get a lot of that from this. And there's something else I'm, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with. The first thought that came to mind when I was trying to figure out what I was getting was something plasticky, but maybe it's almost like a rubber type of thing. Um, but I don't want to say chemical. It's not a bad thing. It's very subtle, but it's like a, it's more of a sensation. I mean, besides that really hot citrus, high acid, I get sweet tart, um, or like you got like the little, the little like wooden spoon thing, and you have like the powdered stuff, you know, that type of candy stuff. Anyone else get anything different? Right. 
Right. So yeah, that that's going to be your mouth feel. Okay. Um, right. Green apples. That's going to be the mallow. You know, apple stuff. Anyone else? Anything else? No. Yeah. You like it? Does everyone like this wine? I like the wine. I like Sauvignon Blancs in general. You don't like it, Terry? Too acidic. Okay. Well, this is definitely a, this is definitely a wine you probably want with some food. And really remember, a lot of wines you want to you really want to have wine with food a lot of times. When you do this evaluation, sometimes you have to remember that you got to think about what you would pair with it rather than just I'm going to drink the wine. Trust me, I have no problem drinking a bottle of wine, just the wine, and that's it, and not have any food with it. But there are some wines that just scream food. I could totally drink this. You know, it's 100 degrees outside. If uh, we were out in the patio, if it was chilled, you know, in the shade, I could totally drink this like that. Also, if it's chilled, it's going to not be as acidic. So these are pretty much room temperature at this point, uh, or close to it. So um, when you chill the wine, it won't be as acidic. So that's also something to think about if you're going to buy this wine for home that you're gonna have it probably, most people are gonna have it like come out of the refrigerator around 30 something degrees. But I like this one, I like it a lot. I mean, if, you, if you're, if you of course it maxes, uh, you're gonna to wanna to buy it. Uh, Liddy, is this like one of the core menu ones? Um, yeah, we, it's actually pretty new. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's available on my bottle. Or, you know, so most likely you'll be able to find any of the maxes wine dives in Texas. Um, and a lot of times with the, the, the parent company is Lasco, and a lot of times they'll have like a like a core set of wines that are available at multiple properties. So uh, you might be you might find it at the tasting room in Houston. Um, you might even find it at Boiler House here um, in uh, in San Antonio. So um, definitely a, a good value wine. Uh, it's not too expensive here. I mean, thirty four dollars for a bottle of wine isn't too bad, and uh, I like it. I mean, if you're gonna. Hell yeah. Good job. Good job, Amador. All right. So uh, we're going to be moving on to wine number two here as soon as we get poured. I'm going to drink a little water. I'm really digging the sweet tart action on that. Uh, I'm really digging the sweet tart action on that wine. It's, I like it a lot. All right. So while Lydia's pouring the next wine, we're going to kind of go through this one. This is the 2011. Chateau de Treviac uh, from the Corbières part of uh, languedoc uh in southeastern France, so south of the Rhone area, kind of along the coast of the Mediterranean. Um, in, in the past, this area of France has been called Wine Lake because a lot of wine is made there. A lot of bulk wine is made in that part of France. So think, you know, jug wine from California. It doesn't mean that all of it's bad because there's actually a lot of good wine that comes from this area. Again, think California. There's lots of good wine that comes from California and lots of jug wine that comes from California. Um, this is a blend of Syrah and Grenache, uh, two, very, uh, two grapes that are very much used in South France uh, or Southeastern France, uh, usually blended together. Uh, French wines tend to not be single varietal wines. Um, it's also very frustrating for Americans because they won't put a lot of times what's on here. Like on the on the front label, it doesn't say. On the back label, I don't think it says either. Oh, it does. It's, it's 60% Syrah, 40% Grenache. Uh, but a lot of times, especially on the front label, it won't say, especially if you get a red wine from Burgundy because you're supposed to know it's Pinot Noir. Um, and that's just one of those things. But, uh, and Europeans all know what it is, or I mean at all, but they, they, most of them tend to know what it is. But the Americans, we got spoiled because the American wineries decided to put the, the grape on the front. So, uh, but uh, Grenache and Syrah are two great grapes. I love both of them. I really like Syrah. You tend to get these great uh, meaty characteristics out of it, especially when we're talking French ones. Uh, so, what do I know about this Chateau? Yeah, nothing. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be one of those cases where uh, there isn't a lot on the internet about, about it. Um, the distributor really didn't have much. Uh, there really isn't much of a fact sheet from, from here. It's not Max's wine dye's fault at all. You know, it's just sometimes when you get wines from your distributor, they just don't have information to give you, not even like a little one sheet on it. But, uh, uh, you know, it just says it's a small village and that's about it. And where it's from. There's really not much else about it. So why don't we get into this wine and we'll check it out again, a red wine. 
Now it's it's not too too opaque. Well, it's kind of pretty opaque. A Syrah tends to be a, a, a wine that you're gonna have a lot of opacity to, whereas Grenache sometimes tends to be a little more see-through. Depends on how it's been made. So really on the, on the nose, I, I get first more of a fruit characteristic rather than earthiness. Well, I was talking with somebody the other day about this, to figure out what's new world and old world. And old world is Europe and new world's the rest of the world. Uh, or as someone said, it's where they sent all the convicts um, in derelicts. Um, there's a little more fruit versus earthiness to this. So it's not a fruit bomb by any means. I don't think I would necessarily confuse this with a new world wine if I was blind tasting it, but um, it definitely doesn't have, to me, a lot of earthiness on at first. Now, with that said, what kind of fruit? I mean, I get just a, kind of a generic red fruit to it. I do get a little bit of like like uh, woodsiness to it, or or uh, uh, not bark, but like stems, like you're in the brush. I get a little bit of that to it. So a kind of combination of fruit and a little bit of earthiness or minerality really because minerality kind of describes everything that's not fruit or floral when you say earthiness you really kind of talk about dirt and those types of organic things so minerality kind of gives you a, a lot broader sense you can talk about plants earth or rocks or you know true minerals I mean really if I'm gonna nail down any fruit I'd probably go with raspberry um, I don't really get any strawberry, I don't get any blackberry, uh, blueberry, or cherry so much. Anyone get any types of special fruits or specific fruits on this? Yes? No? They just smell like alcohol in a glass? Okay. All right. Well, I mean, that's, it's 14.5% alcohol. It's not too high, but it is, you know, a decent amount of alcohol for a wine. Sorry? It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Did you already taste it? Did you like it? No? All right, let's taste it then. What's a few things going on here for me? Um, I still get that... Uh, I, I do get the alcohol. Um, it's not super, super hot, but I do get it. Can, when you breathe out, do you feel that? Do you feel a little bit of a burn in your chest and, 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 and through your mouth? Um, tannins are, I would say, moderate, you know, medium tannins, not really heavily tannic. Um, I do get a bit of tartness to it, um, really just coating my tongue with that. As far as the fruit, I still get that raspberry. I still get that kind of bark or, or um, stemminess to it. Um, and there was all, something else. Uh, almost like a mint, like actual mint leaves. If you ever, if you eat mint leaves, you ever get anything like that out of it? I mean, I do. I don't know what you're getting, uh, but I get a little bit of mint out of this too. We really got, I've got a little chocolate out of it, but I don't get anything like that. And it feels more minerality or mineral driven rather than fruit driven. So I probably would take this to Old World, but I'm, I might, as I don't drink a lot of Southeastern France or French wines, I might not have taken it to there. But the alcohol is, is I wouldn't say not, it's uh, not unusual for there to be high alcohol wines from that area of France. Um, we got price on, all right. Thank you, Martin. All right. so. Um, Treviac uh, sells here uh, by the bottle just normally $49, but uh, retail-wise, and this is going to be the special for everybody here, um, it's going to be $29.99 on this. So um, this is a, it's a good wine. I like it. I, I, like, I think I like the Sauvignon Blanc better. I think I really like it. But this also is a wine I think you need to have food with. I mean, if you were going to do like, uh, like those poppers, the, the, the stuffed peppers, that would go great with this. And that's where, and that's where um, a wine that's pretty good starts becoming really good. Because when you pair it with food, then you start getting into all those great 
um, mixture of flavors and aromas. Um, like I said, sometimes wines are really good on their own, and other times they really need to have food. And this is definitely, a t to me, a food wine. You know, if I was gonna have those stuffed peppers, that would be great. Um, or the bison sliders uh, that they have here. Uh, those, some, uh, some other good stuff. I'm not sure about that, um, maybe that chili mac, right, Christian? Yeah? Every time I come here and have the chili mac, I send Christian a, a text message with a picture of it, and then he says he hates me. Lisa said the hot dog too. That's good. I have I haven't had that in a while. Um, so, what are your thoughts on the wine? Do you like it? Yes. Are you don't like it? Are you kind of like meh on it? Like it? Like it? You like it? You want more of it? It's round. Round? Yeah, actually, yeah. But it, 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 I was kind of having fun with it. But round is a describe is a descriptor in wine. I mean, people talk about the mouth feel, how it feels. Is it angular? Is it round? Is it soft? Um, is it harsh? So I think round is a good is a good description for that. Like a basketball that the bulls won't be shooting anymore. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Christian. That's all right. The way the Spurs are playing, uh, you might be able to uh, give me a hard time about that here soon, too. Um, we're going to go on to wine number three here. So this, I'm real excited about this because of a few things. One, this is a cool name. This is the Barbarian, the 2010 Barbarian from Meeker Vineyards. Uh, this is a, another blend. Uh, it's a blend of, should I can remember without looking at my notes? Barbera, Barbarian, and Zin. Now they have different percentages from different counties of these grapes. 50% uh, from Sonoma, 40% from Napa, and 10% from Yuba, is it Yuba County? Okay. I'm not from California, so sometimes those things really confuse me. Um, it doesn't say what percentages of each grape come from those counties, but it's, uh, it's a mixture of different uh, counties. Uh, this one, uh, they were founded in 1977. Well, actually, the Charles and Molly Meeker bought the vineyard in Sonoma, Dry, Sonoma County's Dry Creek Valley in 97, 77, sorry. And then in 84, they established the winery. So they were, they were wine or grape growers first. Um, and Charlie was the winemaker at first. They specialized in Zin, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Chardonnay at first. Um, they said that their first release was the 84 Zin. It was an instant success, winning eight wine competition medals and becoming the third most awarded Zin in the country that year. Um, so they've been around for quite a while. Um, Charlie also is a work, is, is, uh, well, was working full-time in Los Angeles in the motion picture business. First as an attorney, then a producer, then as a studio exec. That's kind of cool. Uh, he became president of MGM. No way, really? For president of MGM uh, in 1990. So uh, that's pretty cool. So let's talk about the grapes real quick. Uh, Zin. Um, Zin is one of my favorite varietals. Uh, I like the spiciness that comes from it. Uh, we're talking like pepper spice type of stuff, not hot spice. Um, Barbera. Barbera is a grape from Italy. It's from the Piedmont area. Uh, it's from the hills of Monferrato in the central Piedmont area. Um, wines that are made with it are Barbera d'Asti, uh, Barbera di Mon Monferrato, and then Barbera d'Alba. So, um, so you can kind of tell, they, they put the name of the grape in the wine. Uh, sometimes Italian wine is a little confusing with name grape or city name, um, but uh, this one, that's the name of the grape. Um, it's also the third most planted grape in Italy. Um, so let's, let's hop into this. Now, this one, oh, uh, and the winemaker's from Texas, right? Yeah. Winemaker's from Texas. What's the UT Austin? Did he do his law degree there too? Yeah. You say, yeah. So he, if, he's, if he's like our age, I might have actually had lunch with him in the law college. That's why you see lunch a lot, because the fine arts cafe, or, or, or dining area sucked. It did. It was loud, obnoxious. The law college was nice wood paneling, comfortable chairs, quiet. Food was a little bit better. It was nice. Um, so this is retailing, or, or this is selling on the wine list for seventy-four bucks. Um, and for here, for tonight, it's going to retail for thirty-nine ninety-nine. Um, so a really good retail value on that. So let's let's hop into this. Thank you. 
I would totally peg this as Italy, just right off the nose. Um, there's there's this slight slight accordion case, what I call it. Uh, so slight bit of dust uh, leather felt, but it's really really subtle. Like probably because I'm looking for it, but it's it's very very subtle. That's why I would say I would take it to Italy immediately. There's I think there's really is a touch of what's called VA or volatile acidity, acidity, which is very typical of Italian wines. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's very, very slight. There's this like kind of hard candy raspberry, I guess raspberry again, but hard candy quality to it. More like the shell that I'm getting from it. Like if I was cinnamon, yeah, that's a, that's a good descriptor right there. That's that's. Like what? Hot tam oh yeah, those hot tamale candies. Yeah, red hots. Yeah, that's that's where I, that's what I was struggling with. I get a little bit of uh, you know woodsiness to it, you know. So the 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 stems or the branches from from trees. I don't get a lot of other earthiness or minerality. I don't get really get any floral. Does anyone get anything different, like fruit wise? Do you get the hot tamale or, or red hot? Out of it, no. All spice, all spice, all spice. I'm spacing out. All spice, nutmeg. You get that? Okay. Anyone? Anything else? No. Oatmeal raisin cookies. Okay. All right. Let's check it out. But on the on the palate, bittersweet. Yeah, I get. Well, there's it's very, and I would call that for myself tart. It's real, real tart. It's a got good acid to it. Um, it's very high acid. Um, I really, yeah, I still get that cinnamon to it. What? What's up? Very dry, very dark, very dark bitter. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> very Darth Vader. You know, I said once that if Darth Vader was wanting to be Tanat, this is close. This might be Darth Maul, but um, but the red. See, you got the red going, right? It was, it was the red one, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I get I get a lot of that. Um, I actually kind of get a fleshiness, like I'm like I'm eating the fruit into this. You know, again more mouthfeel, and that's going to be from your tannins. This is also another wine that you definitely got to have food with. This is not a wine you're going to pop open and sit on the couch and watch TV and sip on. You're just not. It's It's got too much going on that it needs to calm down. It needs to pair with something. Um, so you get a good some good food with it. So any types of meats, um, I mean, just go into any type of Italian food. If you get you know a good red sauce, a good bolognese sauce, that's going to really help combine with the, with the wine there with the high acid with the tomato sauce that's going to be really good with that um, I can see doing like pot roast with this you know something like a stew you know something that's that's really hearty that this is going to be able to stand up to um, you're not gonna you're not gonna have I wouldn't have lamb or veal or, or pork chops with it um, but you definitely would want a steak you know uh, brisket yeah I was about to go there barbecue because I do kind of get that a lot of times I when I think when I get uh, volatile acid, volatile acidity in wine it kind of makes me think about barbecue sauce and brisket and that type of stuff um, so this is this is a I like this wine a whole heck of a lot um, it's it's good but you gotta have food with it I mean if I I wouldn't like if this was if I was at home I wouldn't like finish this wine off by itself I would wait to have something with it as far as dinner um, these two like this one I would totally just chug 
not in a bad way, but like I'd be like, man, I'm thirsty. You know, this one I would probably, I'd probably want food with it, but if I, you know, twist my arm and I want to have a few drinks, I could probably drink this on its own, but, but this one, for sure, get some food into your, into your gut and, uh, and drink this with it. Everyone like this wine? Really like it? Yes? Okay. All right. I like it a lot. Mark, you want to have some fun? Want to do a blind? Do a white and a red. We're going great on time. Yeah, oh, just bring them both. I'll do them both real quick. All right, so a couple of you have seen me do this. You've seen me fail miserably. Uh, well, that's because at one place they had like the wines that you would never, yeah, the most random wines. It was good. So real quick, and I just kind of want, I've been toying about doing this for a while, and I've actually recorded myself doing this at Max's on the iPhone a few times, um, but I've never posted it. And I've always wanted to do a blind tasting. So for sure, I could do it here because I have no idea what they're gonna bring me. Hopefully you're not gonna try to trick me, but if they do, they do, okay? Uh, it could be any wine that they, they have here that's pretty much by the glass or they may already have open. One of the cool things about Max's is that if you buy Two, if you're gonna buy two glasses of any wine, they'll open up the bottle. So it could be the most, right, right, Martin? It could be the most expensive one? Okay, it could be the most expensive one on the list. If you buy two glasses from it, they'll open the bottle. It might be really expensive glasses, you know, but you don't have to buy the whole bottle. They'll open it for you. Because um, at some point in time, someone's gonna drink it. Somebody like me is gonna walk in and go, what do you got open? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, one time I, I had Camus as my blind, <laughs> but it was easy. I was like, this is totally an Napa cab. And I was nervous because I thought I was going to mess it up. And uh, the bartender showed it to me. I was like, Ooh, man, I'm glad I was confident about that one. Um, so we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to do a white and a red and I have no idea. So let's go through what a, what a blind tasting is real quick. That is where you, um, you have but basically four minutes and 10 seconds to describe a wine and to narrow down what it is. Now, those of you who've seen Bottle Shock, this is not me calling a 1950 something Chevelle Blanc, okay? I'm not gonna do that. It's very hard to do that, especially now. There's so many wineries in the world. It's very hard to sit there and just a random wine, just call it like that, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about where it's most likely from the world. We're gonna to try to narrow down the vintage. We're gonna to try to narrow down what grape it is or blend of grapes, uh, if it's a blend, uh, and to figure out what country and if we can go farther, uh, what area of that country it is. Uh, so we're gonna try that. We, we usually do white first and then red. Um, I will start the clock uh, when I first, let me give myself an actual white background. This is also unusual because I almost never do this during the day at Max, it's always dark in here so I can never really see the color right. So uh, we're gonna get started. All right, wine number one is a white wine, obviously. Uh, it's a little bit golden color. It's not, uh, it's not, too, um, not too thin colored. Um, not a whole, you know, as far as rim variation, I mean, in the center, there's also maybe a little bit of green in the center. Um, it is gonna be a little difficult because these LEDs might alter the wine a little bit. Oh, I know with white wines, it tends to seem like it, it changes it up a bit, but a little bit of gold too, maybe a little green to it too. Uh, viscosity, doesn't really tell you a whole heck of a lot, honestly, but it might give you some clues that give you down the right path. I'd say viscosity is pretty high, actually. That means that the legs or the tears are taking a long time to come down, at least on my glass. Sometimes I've done it and it's high and then the nice swirl and it goes down really quick. So, but I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Wow. All right, so I wanna say like pineapple for days on this. I mean, really just tropical fruit, like nobody's business on this thing. I feel like I'm doing a wine review. I gotta go faster. So pineapple, almost like canned pineapple, pineapple juice. Um, 
not much else on the nose. I don't get any wood. No evidence of obvious evidence of wood. No floral. I don't really get any minerality. Uh, also apple, almost like apple juice, like red apple juice. Yeah, and I also get like the fleshiness of the apple now. It's, it's kind of go from pineapple to apple, and it's more like red apple. That kind of narrows. It's, it's making the world a little smaller right now in my head. This is, it, it's not a cider or a Calvados, but it's almost like drinking alcoholic apple juice. I mean, this is, it's real tasty. And it's got, it's got a hint of residual, it feels like it has some residual sugar in it, but it could be because it's so apple-y that I'm confusing that with sweetness, but it really feels like there's a little bit of um, residual sugar into it. It's hard to get past that one flavor, but let's just talk about let's talk about structure. So I'm gonna say it's kind of a medium plus or medium on the acid. Again, I don't get a huge lot of minerality, so I don't get like wet rock or anything like that. Definitely no earth. Um, it doesn't feel like it has any oak treatment at all, so I don't get any. Um, I really don't get any type of Christmas spices or vanilla or dill or coconut. So I'm gonna to totally eliminate that this is an oaked uh, one, even though the golden color kind of want to make, wants to make me think that, uh, but it also could be some skin contact. Um, so I'm gonna say this is probably stainless steel. Now, is this new world or old world? Well, with it being so fruity, I'm gonna probably take this into the new world because we're gonna eliminate what it's not. I don't think this is, I don't think it's any type of classic old world. I could be confused. I could be, I could be thrown off. It's possible, but I'm going to take this into the new world. Um, I think it's because of the fruit. I really think it's it's got um, lower acid, not high acid. I think we're talking a higher climate or hotter climate. Um, I'm really going to probably try to take this into new world, into into United States and maybe even California. Uh, I'm, this really kind of kind of screams Chardonnay that's not been oaked from California. So let's take it to Chardonnay. Uh, vintage, it tastes fairly young, so one to three years. We'll go to maybe 2011, Chardonnay, California, and we'll roll the dice and say Sonoma. I'm totally wrong. All right, so what is it? Show us, where's the... I'm checking the vintage right now at the Chenin Blanc Vouvray. Chenin Blanc Vouvray. Okay, so I can kind of see where I'm getting those. But I, and... So I, I took, I went Chardonnay because of the apples. Because of all the apples and it didn't feel like it went through malolactic fermentation. I actually thought, I actually was confused when I said, I, I'm, I might be old because I thought it might be a, a Chablis, but it's not. Uh, so Vouvray Chenin Blanc. So we talking Loire? I believe Loire. Yeah. Loire? Yeah. Okay. This is good though. Really good. This is really good. All right, the late, Les Trois Arguilles, Vouvray. Um, yeah, this is it. So, see, I don't know everything. All right, so, stop that. I did it in four minutes and 20 something seconds, so I took a little too long on that one. All right, reset. Let's do number wine number two. All right, wine number two is a red wine. Ooh, a little bit of, so this, this wine isn't like, this isn't like really purple or really like red. Um, you kind of can call it brick red, but we got told don't call it brick because brick comes in many different colors. But there's a bit of like um, brownness to it, almost almost a little bit of orange to it. Um, definitely rim variation to the edge. A little bit of staining on the glass. Yeah, really, it's it's kind of a not orange orange, but yeah, it's kind of like a reddish orange on that. I would call the viscosity probably medium minus. Uh, it seemed to be, seemed to really go down pretty quick. On the nose, um, again, a little bit of slight VA, but there's definitely more, um, 
earth driven than fruit driven. I even get maybe, not, I wouldn't really say funk, but I get some kind of earthiness to it. A little bit of uh, stems, branches. On the fruit, really just gonna say, cause it's kind of a generic red fruit. I wouldn't say really anything dark or black or blue fruit. So it's just kind of a red fruit, maybe a little bright red fruit. Uh, floral, there might be a hint of floral. Now I'm getting kind of like almost a caramel on the nose. Blondie, right? right inside joke. <laughs> I'll explain the joke later. On the palate again, high acid on the palate. Um, I'm getting more fruit now. So I really get kind of more cherries. Um, I really got, I'm getting some cocoa out of this, a little bit of chocolate out of it. So on the, on the nose, it was starting to take me old world. On, on the uh, palate, it kind of makes me want to go new world on it. And I was getting, I'm getting some of that cocoa on the nose now that there was that caramel changing into cocoa and chocolate. No, but the fruit, it's not over, it's not over the top fruit. It's not extracted fruit. It really kind of takes me back to the old world. I don't feel like this is a fruit bomb by any means. Also due to the color, it really makes me think that there's a bit of age on this wine. This could be a four to seven year old bottle of wine. Naxxas does have wines that are, that are a lot older than three years. Um, so I really think that this, this may have had seen some age to it. So, um, fruit, the VA. I want to go Italy with this. It's definitely not Spain. It is not a German Pinot Noir. Uh, I don't believe it's anything from Portugal. I don't, it could be France. It could be Italy. I'm almost guaranteeing you it's not anything from California. I doubt it's from Australia. This is what, so I'm going through the head what I don't think it is. Um, I really don't think it's from South America, though. It could be something kind of funky from Argentina or Chile. That caramel really on there really is just kind of driving me crazy. I think this is a, an old world wine, four to, four to seven years. Um, I think I will take this to Italy. I think I actually will take this to um, Piedmont. Um, outside of that, other than just saying it's Nebbiolo, I can't tell you whether it's a Barbera, I'm sorry, a Barbaresco um, or a um, Barbera. But I'm going to say it's probably a 2007 or 8 uh, Nebbiolo from Piedmont. Now, how off was I? I, th I thought they were going to grab the lucky country again. 2007, uh, Santa Fe Reserve from Tuscany. I, so I was just a little far north. I wanted to, I, I was thinking Tuscany too, but it just really kind of, I wanted to get out of Tuscany. But at least I was in the country and I was, yeah. <laughs> so again, it's not a parlor trick. You go what it's not. And uh, the VA also was the hint of Italy, like we discussed earlier. Uh, I didn't get the accordion case or anything like that, but you know, there's the minerality with that. So that is what a blind tasting looks like. Again, it took a little longer. Um, we're going to wrap this up. I just want to thank everybody again for coming in. Uh, really appreciate all of you taking time out of your, out of your night on a Monday night, uh, especially all my friends from Austin coming down. Max is again uh, to Lydia Martin. Uh, and also Amanda, who's not here. She's in California uh, for uh, getting all this organized with me. And of course, everybody at Lasco and Max's in Houston and everybody over there. Um, 301, I have no idea what 301 is going to be like yet. Um, I'm probably going to take a week off 
as far as actually recording something. So probably in two weeks you'll see an episode uh, from next week when I'm going to post this. So it might be three weeks before you actually see another episode. Um, and that's going to do it. As always, friend me up in the links above. Click the links below. About, I'll have links about these wines. Uh, leave comments. If uh, you have any questions or comments, if you feel to email me, leave comments below on the website and tell your friends about it. Uh, or hit the donate button over there for uh, some bottles of wine. That's going to do it. Thank you, everybody. We'll see everyone again next time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>